Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the Card Kit of the Month for Spellbinders for March 2019. As always, we're going to do a five card one kit for this, and this month's theme for Spellbinders is relax and enjoy. And that is the perfect sentiment when we are being creative, right? We need to relax, and we need to always enjoy this. So let's dig in and let's see what comes in our kit for the month of March. So as always, it does come in this packaging here, um, which is a great box if you're looking for storage solutions um, for your space, your crafty space. Um, they're nice and flat um, and they work really well. There's a few things that I use them for. So when it comes to the kit, um, as always, you get a card that sits on the top and that card gives you project inspiration so that you can start using items within your kit. And then of course, it also tells you what exactly is uh, what the contents are within your kit. Sorry about that. What also comes in is your cardstock, and you get six pieces of colored cardstock and one mirrored. So black, green, white, a light green, a peach, and a light blue, and a piece of copper mirror cardstock. On top of that paper that you get, you also get a full six by six paper pad by Spellbinders. This is also called Relax and Enjoy, and it is one of the add on items for the month of March. Now remember, this is paper. This is not cardstock weight. Um, so it is lighter. So you can back it on another piece of cardstock, which you've seen me do in previous videos. Just if you want to give it some a little bit more stability, um, a little bit more firmness, um, I sometimes tend to do that. What also comes in your kit are what I refer to as journaling cards. Um, they do remind me, I believe it was called Project Life. Um, but these are great focal points for your cards with sentiments and images um, that can help you create some great backgrounds. As always, you get your 10 envelopes and 10 card bases. Your card bases are the standard A2 size, which are four and a quarter by five and a half, and they are side folding card bases. You get a block of some double-sided foam, which you can use the entire block, and of course a roll of some double-sided tape. You also get a packet of sentiment stickers. Now these are on ivory and brown with some gold print. The sentiment stickers are also another add-on for the month of March. They have a wonderful texture to them. Um, it's almost like fabric, but it's not. These vellum butterflies are absolutely beautiful. They are actually stickers. Um, and again, these are also an add-on for March as well. So what's nice is the entire base of the butterfly is the sticker, so you don't have to worry about any glue or tape or anything like that. My favorite part, as always, is the ephemera pack. I love digging into this. I think there are some great <laughs> images in these things. Um, they give you so much. They give you two of each image. Um, but there's sentiments, there's tickets, there's feathers, there's florals, there's anything. As always, you get a clear stamp set. This is part of the March add-ons as well. And you have some great sentiments, some beautiful floral images. Um, and also, it seems like we've got a succulent theme going on here. Um, but some really nice images to work with. A few sequins. And of course, your die pack. Now, the die pack is holding 21 dies. And this is what they look like. I thought it might be easier for you to see, to get an idea. I find this does help me now if I do this, just to say, okay, what is this? And then I don't forget pieces. So three of them can be layered. The terraniums actually got cuts in it, so you can actually tuck items in there. We've got some sentiments, and then the two hearts with the arch actually creates a frame, and that's what they show you on the project on the one side of the card. So it's, it's very unique. Very much so. So of course, right off the bat, I'm going to dig right into that ephemera pack. I just chose some of the strips in there, um, a couple of the sentiments, and I'm just going to have fun layering. Um, all of that ephemera is just laying in front of me and I'm just, I'm constantly digging into it and, and looking to see what could be added, what couldn't be, um, and all of that. There's just some really unique items in there. So after I grabbed a few things, I've got my sentiment and then the one cardstock strip going across. 
I grabbed the daily news and I want to put one of the hearts that are in there on top of that and then the butterfly I'm going to bend up the wings because of course I love dimension and I'm gonna cut a slice off from the foam block that we get in our kit and I'm going to put that right up the center. This way I'll be able to have some dimension on my butterfly, even though I'm bending the wings up. You can never have too much dimension um, on our cards. Well, at least I can't. I like a lot of dimension. Yes. So once that's placed, now I'm going to look at, okay, I want this feather. So now I realize I'm going to place the feather down below the book as if it's coming from the book so that everything's kind of connected. I didn't want um, items to be broken. There's, there's always, or at least I do. Um, I always tend to connect when I'm doing uh, these multiple layers when it comes to my cards. Just, I guess it creates a flow for me. Um, it, it just captures my eye that way. And in my eyes, I let my eyes actually tell me what looks good, what doesn't. I know that's weird too. So. Um, that just looked that stepping stone that I was creating. And then I placed the newspaper over that. So we have a hint of that. I trimmed off the side of the cardstock strip that I had, and I will adhere this onto our card base that is included in our kit. I am using my liquid glue. I am a liquid glue person. Um, I'm finding I'm using that more and more, um, I use a lot of the double-sided tape when it comes to adhering if I want to make that paper more stable um, that I will use that for. I was in a house theme on this card <laughs> for card number two. I found these three great images in the ephemera pack. Um, I'm going to place those down. I saw this great journal card because it had the same images. Um, but again, even though they're the same images, it's not matchy matchy because there are different ways that they're being viewed and colored. So I'm going to layer them onto the journal card. Um, the one's going to be propped up using the foam squares. The others I'm just going to place right down, but kind of hanging over the edge of that journal card. The sentiment that I chose from the pack is home sweet home. And the paper that I chose is just a bunch of house windows. So I thought that was really cool. So I'm going to take the um, journaling card that we just built up. I'm going to use my double-sided tape. I am using some tape from a previous um, kit that I, um, that I had worked with because we always have extras, or at least I do. And I'm just going to put that down onto my card base. So I think that's really cute. You know, the house, house, you know, matchy. I thought it was cute. I was having fun with it. So again, I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to put that down onto the card base that's included and we'll set that right in place. My panels have been cut to be a scant four and a quarter by a scant five and a half. So that's like five and three eighths by four and an eighth, if that's what you're looking for. Still couldn't get away from the ephemera pack. So I'm playing with these because the, the, concept of random act of kindness or the statements for it i am a true fan of um i think um could you imagine if each of us did that i think it would be absolutely wonderful and i try to do it every day um just to pay it forward you know i i, I believe that um there's people that have helped me in the past and everything else so this card was kind of special to me so playing with the butterflies, I pulled one of the butterflies out of um, the ephemera pack, and then I wanted to use one of the yellow vellum and also the pink because I thought that matched the kindness um, ticket. And now we're just going to set things in place. These stick very well, and it's nice that they are layered with the wings coming up because then I can overlap it with the one sign. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down the center. Um, and of course, I'm going to add some foam squares underneath the wings to um, just help keep them propped up in case they should want to fall back down. Um, I just want to keep them raised to hold on to the dimension that I'm kind of building here. I do like the... Um, 
all of the multiple layers and, and what that ephemera pack can give you. They create beautiful cards. Again, you know, maybe you don't have inks, maybe you don't have um, colored pencils or, or anything like that. You could be that crafter that doesn't want any of that. Um, and that's fine. That doesn't mean you're not a card maker. It doesn't mean that you can't create those beautiful cards. I mean, I haven't pulled in any inks or anything like that. Glue and everything that's been in the kit, that's the beauty of this. Um, so yeah, everybody has a different style by all means. So I've done a lot of die cutting to save some time here. So I die cut a lot of the flowers, the three different sizes. I've die cut here. I'm showing you the frame that you can actually make using these hearts and everything. I'm not going to use the individual hearts. Um, I've already die cut the leaves and the butterflies and, and all of just some of the images. So now I'm going in and I'm using my foam block and I'm bending, I'm breaking the fibers with this tool that I have. I, I have no idea where I got it. I'll be very honest. Um, I just found it when I was cleaning. <laughs> so I use this um, just to break those fibers to bend that paper up and then I'll flip them over and push in the center so that they come up and down to create that dimension. Um, you can use the back of a pen as long as it's rounded. Anything that's rounded, you can use, not a knife, I know it's got a rounded edge, but it's also got a, it's very flat. Um, but anything with a rounded edge, um, you can actually use to do that same thing. You do not need to have a tool. So I was originally going to set all of this up on that beautiful pattern paper there because I just love the colors. The colors are what drew me in, but I thought the pieces were getting lost. I wasn't seeing them. So I just trimmed down a smaller panel that is about um, three by three and a half. And I'm going to adhere the whole banner on here, on this, on this white panel, just so that these can pop up. I wanted to keep the color soft. So I stuck with a pink and an ivory. The only bright color that's kind of snapping out um, at this is that lime green that I chose. But I thought it went, I really liked it with the craft cardstock that I was using as well. Um, now, again, you can use, these were just scraps that were sitting next to me um, when it came to my choice of uh, cardstock. Um, but again, you do get plenty, you know, within the kit. You could use some of the paper pad as well. You know, find areas that you can die cut in that are solid. Um, so that you have a more solid piece. You may not get the pattern depending upon where you place it. So now we're just having fun using the liquid glue. We're going to place these all over. And as I keep adding them, it's going to build up. It's going to keep on getting larger and larger. It's going to keep on um, building on itself. These flowers are going to start curling on their own. It's kind of pretty interesting. Um, but we're just going to build up around. I'm okay that I'm covering up the bottom of the copper frame. Um, it's the top that I really want to be shown in great detail, actually. So I'm okay with that. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down onto a piece of scratch paper. And I'm just going to use that to put glue on the tips of my smaller leaves here. Again, using the craft and the lime green. I really don't go and use the darker green. I thought the dark was actually too dark and kind of stood out too much. So just using those. So we have this soft floral that's going around on top of, and even though the background is soft, I mean, they're not bold, bright colors, but the colors are strong. At least that's what I was saying. Um, to me, they were very strong. And it's kind of a busy pattern as well back there. So that was another reason why I wanted to choose this white background that I'm putting it on. Um, just so that it would help this to, to stand out a little bit more. 
I'm going to make the connection. I'm actually taking the hearts on each side of the arch and putting them on top of each other. So you can actually create a smaller frame. You can make it larger just by keeping them separate and put the single heart in between if you want. I also die cut the small little butterflies and I'm about to grab um, one of the larger vellum butterflies and I wanted to use one of the teals. I thought it would go really well. So I'm just placing that down looking at where these other two butterflies will go and just adding a little bit of glue. Okay, a lot of glue just to make sure that they stick. I like glue. <laughs> I think it's great. And then we'll push our vellum butterfly in place. And I'm just going to bend up the sides just to make sure we have that dimension. And then we'll place that on the panel. So we'll have just a, a slight border of the of the background panel coming around so it's not as strong. As you can see, I'm finally getting through my cold. It's, it's been a while, so I'm sorry I haven't been around in a while. I kind of went the opposite way, so I do apologize. My uh, voice is still going to go in and out for a little bit. They say it's going to be around for a while, so. But I'm back. We're good now. So I chose one of the sentiments, Celebrate Every Day. I'm going to put that up in the upper right-hand corner for the sentiment. I think that adds just enough, still keeping the focus on all of the work that we did. And I'm going to grab some of my Nouveau Drops in Aqua and just fill in the centers of my flowers. Didn't want to go too crazy with that. Um, just wanted to keep the color the same. I was even okay with the color being the same as the paper that I had used. It just gives the illusion that there is a center. And for our final card, I'm going to play around with the stamp set. So I always try to, you know, use all of the pieces in the beginning and then, of course, get into the die cut on the fourth card. And then, of course, the fifth card, I go into the stamp or vice versa with the fourth and the fifth. I try to show you everything. So I grabbed the side sprig that was in the stamp set and I'm going to stamp that with my Versamark ink at the bottom left hand yeah the bottom left hand corner of the top and bottom so when I flip it you'll you'll see so I kind of have this angle that's going on with it I'm using my fine detail um, black embossing powder by Brutus Monroe um, it is one of my favorites for fine detail black sometimes I just don't want to pull out my VersaFine black ink um, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, um, but I am liking how the fine detail uh, works with this. I just grabbed a couple colors of my uh, watercolor pencils. And once I just lay a little bit of the darker color down where the shade would be, and I put the lighter color towards the top, and I just blend them out so that they kind of do their own blending. I pull from the bottom and I pull from the top, and when they meet, they're going to mix the way that they want to mix. Um, I'm then going to come in. Now, I chose some uh, purples and reds, um, or a purple and a red, for these flowers. And you can see I'm literally just scribbling in these sections just to get some of the, pink, the pigment down from the watercolor pencil. And then I'm just coming in with my water brush just to move it. And I'm not really looking for shading or anything else. By the way of these merging with themselves, um, they'll puddle and pull because I did emboss. Um, so they'll actually create their own shading. For, some, for an image this small, there is no stress. Just get your pigment in there and then when the water hits it, it will actually move it for you. And then by brushing across, even though you have an embossed area, it's still going to create that movement for you and those uh, difference in, in color values um, and shading. So it actually does it, you know, just on its own. You can see, again, I'm just scribbling, making sure I have water coming out so that there will be different values in the shade. And that's all I'm going to do to the petal. Very simple. Of course, I had to dig into the ephemera pack. When I have it spread out in front of me, um, I have to keep looking at it. So I found something and there was a sentiment that was in the uh, sticker pack 
that again it just caught my eye as <laughs> as strange as that sounds i am one now i do apologize i zoomed in so that you could see my coloring i forgot to zoom back out so that you can see what i'm doing so i took one of the sticker sentiments and put it on a piece of the copper paper um, and it says good coffee and a good book so that really just caught my eye um, that I needed to have those books. I remembered that those books were sitting in, in that ephemera pack. So I just cut it in half and then I'm going to prop up my sentiment using the double-sided foam and I'm going to set that down and I'm going to make sure the bottom of those books are, um, are covered. And then we'll just set that right in the center. Now I probably should have grabbed a coffee cup too. Yeah, but that's okay. I just thought of that as I was watching this. This is what happens when I do my voiceovers. I'm sitting there going, oh, I should have done that. Ah, right. What, and again, I am so sorry. I, I, there we go. <laughs> I finally realized I'm a little close. Um, that paper was, is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you could just, honestly, you could just put that piece of paper on your card base and just put a sentiment on it and be done. That would be an absolutely beautiful card. Um, sometimes, you know, there's just papers where they just make you go, wow. And, and that is definitely one of them. So I do love that image. Um, but I'm going to set my panel down, cover it up, and we're just going to set that in the center. I'm going to use the sequins that come in the kit and I'll place those around below and above the sentiment. They're a really pretty, um, it's like a brown copper. There's more brown than copper, but there is a copper hint to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like a, a brown gold with a splash of copper. At least that's what I'm going with. We think. And here are the cards that we made today using the Spellbinders card kit of the month for March 2019. I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope I gave you some inspiration for when you receive your kit in the mail. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I will make sure that I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, the links to Spellbinders website, blog, inspiration gallery, their value clubs, and also their other kit of the months will be linked down below as well if you're curious to see what they have to offer. Again, I thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe and tune in for my next video. This week's going to be interesting. I think we're going to turn it into a Spellbinders week. Here are a few other videos I thought you might like similar to this one. Take care, everyone, and always remember, be creative.